recent weeks, the Iraqi military has made key gains against the forces of the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. And few military minds have received more credit for those battlefield wins than this man, Iranian General Hossam Soleimani, the leader of Iran's elite special operations Quds Force. When Iraqi troops pushed back Islamic State militants in the key town of Jerf al sakr late last month, Iranian state media and Iraqi news websites suggested Soleimani masterminded the victory. As military advisor, Soleimani is also credited with leading Shia militias and Iraqi troops in key wins against Islamic State forces, advancing on villages surrounding the capital Baghdad. The Islamic State terrorists sought to surround Baghdad, but they failed in reaching their ominous goals thanks to Iran's support. If I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness. So I set about, however necessary, to take over the United States. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves. I'd have judges promoting pornography. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that explaining is more fun. the devil, I just keep right on doing what he's doing. And now what's your assessment of this? Absolutely. Well, I got to tell you, Tucker, I'm of the opinion, I'm not even sure why we're still in Iraq. I'm not even sure why we're still in Afghanistan. I think the American people are sick of all of this. We've been there for decades. Uh, and quite frankly, I think I'm sick of us spending trillions of dollars and costing thousands of American lives to do other people's businesses. Um, this is Israel and Saudi, uh, Israel and, and Saudi Arabia should be taking the, the lead on this and dealing with the Iranian situation. If we're that concerned that they're going to become a nuclear power, uh, Israel and Saudi should be taking the lead. I think the U.S. role actually should be to uh, keep Russia and China at arm's length and let Israel and the Saudis deal with Iran uh, in a definitive way. So. I'm, I'm sick of us doing other people's business, Tucker. Uh, it's cost us a lot of money. It's cost us a lot of lives. At some point, we have to say enough is enough. We're going to stop doing other people's work and let them take the, take the lead. And, and let me just say, this is speculation, but I think they'd be happy to. <laughs> Douglas McGregor, these attacks, Doug, on the base in Iraq by Iran amount to what do you think? What does this mean? Well, uh, I think it means that we're about to find out if we got the president we voted for. The question is, will he de-escalate and withdraw our forces from Iraq as the Iraqi government has requested and the American people demand? Or is he now going to respond in a way that guarantees a larger war? with uncertain possibilities and outcomes, uh, a war that undoubtedly will destroy his presidency. So I think those are the three critical questions. And, and, and this conflict specifically, um, the yes. conflict with Iran specifically, has been the decades-long focus of a very small group of 
people here in Washington. John Bolton, the former National Security Advisor, the disgraced National Security Advisor, uh, w- would be a leader um, in that group. So you're saying that the president has, in effect, been used by people who despise him in order to get to where we are tonight. Well, yeah, obviously. I mean, after all, our principal enemy from 2001 forward, some would say much earlier, were the Sunni Islamists. Uh, and yet, over and over and over again, there has been a desperate attempt by a series of leaders in this country and more important, uh, powerful, influential voices inside the Trump administration pushing the president into conflict with Iran. And at this point, uh, certainly we could go to war with Iran. And Iran would suffer. The Russians would undoubtedly join the fray at some point. The Chinese would inexhaustible piles of cash will finance the Russians and and ultimately go to work to help the uh, Iranians. Europeans will look at this as though we've lost our minds, and they're probably right. The Japanese, the Koreans will stay out of it, refuse to have anything to do with this. And uh, when the rest of the Middle East starts to be destroyed under hails of missiles, I imagine that our alleged strategic partners in the Arabian Peninsula will back away. So this is, a, this is a very dumb idea. And remember that when you destroy Iran, you are essentially opening the floodgates to Mr. Erdogan and Turkey and the Sunni Islamists that we have been fighting. If you like ISIS, destroy Iran and you will get ISIS times 100. Yes.